This is a video about the calculations for the um, measuring really small things lab. And this part of it, this, this video, um, explains how we're going to get to the calculations for using laser diffraction to measure the thickness of the hair. So in this picture right here, okay, what I tried to show, please excuse my waves, they're not very good waves, but um, this represents this distance right here, W, represents the thickness of the hair. And it ends up that a, a hair acts just like a slit, you know, like when we did the double slit uh, experiment, we talked about that. So when the light comes through here, when it reaches the, the hair, after the hair, it acts as if it's a new source of light. So each wave comes off. Um, so this red wave would be one, um, one photon one, one um, wave of light. Now, b b these are really, really close together, these waves. So this blue represents another one. These waves are so close together that they interact with each other. There's, with each other. There's constructive and destructive interference. Now, when, okay, for d first of all, for destructive interference, the peaks and the troughs line up and the crests line up. With the peaks and the troughs. So this would this is what two waves would look like if they were undergoing destructive interference. Um, and the when that's going to happen is when they when when they're like this. Now, if the distance, if the thickness of the hair, W is what we call it, okay, um, is such that a wave that that starts right down here is in phase with the wave up here, um, then a wave that's halfway down, half of W, <clears throat> will be exactly one, you know, out of phase, and we'll get this condition. So what we need, okay, is the condition for um, a wave on one side of the hair and then the other side of the hair being in phase. Peaks line up, troughs line up. That condition is W sine theta is equal to some integral multiple of the wavelength then. I'll, I'll get to that. So let's look at these triangles right here. So this first triangle, it's, it's a really small triangle, um, and theta, this angle, um, and it's hard to see, theta is the angle that right in here. And due to properties of trigonometry, okay, so this is a right triangle, and sine of theta is equal to opposite the, the, the size of this side of the triangle over the hypotenuse, the length of this side, which is w. Let me write that. opposite over hypotenuse, but I'll write w because in our triangle w is a hypotenuse, which means if we take sine of theta times w, w cancels, and that is the length of the opposite tri side. Now, what the, the, this distance here is it's the difference that uh, this wave down here travels compared to the distance that this wave up here traveled. See, this, this wave up down here has to travel a farther distance than this wave does. And if that distance that the second wave down here has to travel is one wavelength farther, what, remember lambda is the wavelength of the light, then what happens is the wave up here and the wave that I didn't draw down here would be exactly in phase, which means that a wave halfway through W would be exactly out of phase. That's our condition for destructive interference down here. Now, the N, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> you get a, the, when you get destructive interference, what you get is you get a dark spot like you guys saw. But remember, you saw more than one dark spot on each side of the bright spot. The bright spot would, spot would be right, right here, okay, directly across. So, When you talk about the first spot, n is just one. So for you guys, 
n is either 1 or 2. It's 1 for the y that you measured for the first spot, so we call that y1. When you measure the second dark spot up here, the distance from the middle of the bright spot to the middle of the second dark spot, that would be y2, and n would be equal to 2 for you. Okay, so that's how we get this w sine theta equals n times lambda. You're going to get destructive interference showing up on the wall any the, anytime the thickness of the hair w times the sine of the angle theta here is equal to some integer 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. times the wavelength of the light. And so you're going to get <clears throat> different angles for different, um, you know, different thetas for different ends. So we're only concerned with n equals 1, n equals to 2. Stop there.